So to my friend HH, congratulations. What an honor. You, you, you get a honey badger for coming out of jail. <laughs> Thank you. Please take your seats. Um, why should you say so many kind things about me? Um, but I'm grateful. I'm actually completely humbled for the words that you've used. And let me stick to my order, the order in which I wanted to say a few words. Uh, first is to really appreciate the presence of the president of Liberal International. Thank you for being here. And thank you for the things you said, very briefly, but uh, quite succinct. Thank you to the deputy chair of Frederick Newman Foundation. Thank you to the organizers, the hosts, TA. Shall I just say thank you to the ladies and gentlemen that are here. I know my colleague, my vice president, you may stand up so people can see you in our party. If you and me. He's here. Dr. Mamba, Dr. Geoffrey Mamba, thank you. We are humbled to be invited to this function, this very important function, extremely humbled. And um, I take it as my singular responsibility to thank Frederick Newman Foundation for recognizing in a small way our efforts, small efforts, not in your small way, in our small way, um, the efforts, our fight for freedom in Zambia, in the region, and Africa as a whole. And I said earlier on that human rights are universal, freedoms are universal. So I think I mean just that. We want to thank you for this wonderful award, African Freedom Award 2017. Thank you very much for it. And um, I had started talking about Mosi for the good words he has said. But I must say that uh, Musa and I hit it out quite quickly after a few interactions. And I he leads a very big party here. But I see him as a young brother as well. And I think Musi forms part of, in my view, and I think the views of many, that Africa is now ripe for a generational change in leadership. People who come with a different background. <laughs> and I think Musi represents that. And many others that we're meeting, when we go somewhere and sneak out somewhere, around the world. We meet a lot of great people out there. And I think it's important that we network these people. And the platform like yours really, really is very helpful. And listening to my colleague from Zanzibar today, I was chatting with my colleague from Botswana, uh, my next door neighbor. There's a lot ahead of you, my colleague, because things are not run well in our country, countries, in our country on our continent. We can run our countries better, there's no doubt about it. But thank you to your party as well, Mosi. I know without their support, you wouldn't do what you have been doing. You wouldn't give us the support that you have been giving us. And I understand that, leading our own party at home, without the support of your party, it's very difficult, even if you may have personal beliefs, to do certain things. So thank you to the DA at large. Thank you so much.
Where is my friend? Please stand up. He managed to come to attend one of my court sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much. He, he survived the deportation. You wanted him deported as well? Thank you. Thank you. We dedicate this award to all of you that have been struggling in a very, very hostile environment in Africa. We did well in the 90s as a continent, moving from one-party states, dictatorships, into democracies. Now the graph is going down. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do to protect the vulnerable. And that work does not require anything to do with persuasion. If it was done out of persuasion, I think we wouldn't do what we do. We do what we do because we believe that those that came before us sacrificed for us to be free. And I'm not being derogatory here. For you whose color of your skin, it's not an issue, but it's like mine. If those who fought for slavery to end did not sacrifice, you and I will so still be in the marketplace being traded as commodities today. So we don't have a choice in our struggle for freedom, for rights, rule of law. We don't have a choice. It is a responsibility, a generational responsibility that is inescapable. I don't want to talk for long. You have listened to us tonight. And thank you to this director of ceremonies, moderator, lady, cup of the lady. I want to thank everybody who has been here today, tonight. I also want to encourage you to do what is right for your communities. To do the things that will help the citizens of Africa to get the leadership that they deserve. Because it's that leadership that will advance our communities, economically, social, and allow us to deal with poverty in a strong and effective manner. It is those efforts that you are making that should not be based on remuneration. I don't do what I do in Zambia because I seek remuneration, no. Because if you did that, then it may well be that a corrupt leadership, which is a brutal dictatorship, may put a bit of money on the table, and you may just be tempted to take it and lose sight of your responsibility to fight for freedom, to benefit the community in which we live. Africa is too rich for its populations to be poor. I'm a great believer in that. It's too rich. You have a paradigm, an inherent contradiction. Rich continent, in all respects, on one hand, and too many poor people on another. The missing link here is a good quality leadership anchored on what we liberals believe in. We believe in things that must be available to us. We must also believe that others need to enjoy the th same things that we want to enjoy, including freedoms liberties, opportunities for support, education. I think I choose to end here and to say fear should not be allowed in our lives. Because I see in my own country there's too much fear. Citizens are afraid. They can't even say a word. I'm telling you. But if we get ruled by fear, then we have no struggle we can engage in, absolutely. We need the confidence, we need the strength, we need the clarity, we need a support network. Once more, Mosi and Thank you very much. God bless all of you. God bless Africa.